This thing is absolute tailor-made for a swim jig or a chatterbait. What's going on everybody? Do y'all know what day it is? Hmm? It's new mold day. Let's go check it out. All right, we are back in the fish cave. And uh, sorry, it's a little, it's a little dark in here. The sun is going down. Um, but we have a really exciting video. Anytime there's a new mold release, I'm super excited. And this one is a continuation of the, those guys right there, Angling AI Molds AR Mold Series, okay? So we have a couple of AR worms. Um, we have the AR toad. Then now we have the AR crawl. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. And uh, I'll, I'll obviously go over, you know, size and details and little tricks that, that, that you can um, use um, in conjunction with other molds, you know, tail molds um, and, and other, actually other molds uh, made by AI that actually fit into this one. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna check this thing out. I think it's, uh, I think it's a super inspiring mold. Uh, it's got great action. I'm, I'm actually gonna include some video action that Josh filmed himself up in Michigan during the kind of beta test phase. Um, we actually have the very first um, finished cut version of, of the mold in hand. Uh, it literally came in the mail like 15 minutes ago. Um, so we're gonna unbox that real quick and um, we're gonna get started. All right, here we go. Uh, have never seen this mold. We are unboxing it, unpacking it for the first time. Yeah, she's a big one. Okay, so my guess is that this is the six cavity because this is humongous. So this mold is going to be offered in a three cavity and a six cavity. So just knowing the plate size here, how big this is, this is for sure the six cavity. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh yeah. And there it is. Fresh out of the oven. 3.5 inch. It's a three and a half inch. And um, there's some really cool things going on here. Number one, it's a part of the AR series, okay? So if you bought the AR Toad and the tail mold for the AR Toad, the same tail mold that works on the frog will work on this, okay? So you're getting uh, value for money here. You buy one tail mold, and this will actually help several different molds in the AR series. And then what's really cool, let me uh, zoom in here. The little legs that come out the side, the little tentacles, guess what those are? Some of you AI mold veterans may recognize that four inch bloodline insert. So if you have any of the bloodline molds and you have the four inch version with the insert mold, you can actually, right, go ahead and shoot around the bloodline inserts. You can shoot around of the uh, tail mold and you can have completely separate colors in just the tentacles and in the tails. Now my, my uh, bloodline mold is actually out on loan. Um, so I actually currently do not have my 4-inch bloodline insert mold here in my shop. Um, however, I do have the ARS um, mini tail mold, so we will be incorporating the tail mold with this as well. Um, really, really beautiful finish on the mold. Again, you know, AI's machining is, is absolutely terrific. And uh, yeah, there is the entire thing. I believe this body is kind of modeled after the uh, the beta crawl, I, I think it's called, um, with, uh, with with a couple of other features. Obviously, the um, AR tail being you know sort of the main highlight of the bait. All right, real quick, let's find this on the website um, because the links are already up at the time of filming. Normally, the links don't go up until we actually release the video. Um, however, this mold is actually already available. Uh, as we are filming so yeah you can get it in advance in a way okay here we go yep so there's the three cavity version and uh, you can see the way that the mold is oriented all the cavities are facing one way this one will work really well with the c block for example um, just in that um, cavity configuration all right and then here's the big double version right there six cavity 199 
and uh, let's see actually yeah I guess the tail mold wouldn't be wouldn't be on here but for those of you who may not be familiar with the tail mold I wonder if it's down here there it is yep that's the tail mold that fits this right there so in any event um, we're gonna go ahead and mix out some plastic um, Josh was telling me that they did their swim test with that on plastic swim bait blend so that's what we're going to be doing and I think we're going to start with a really exciting color we're going to start with a laminate color and we're going to go for some good sour grape black sinking plastic done on plastic swim bait blend this is our plastic of choice here we don't have very much left oh, I have a little leaf flat fragment in there that's that's lovely so anyway, just a quick stir. There's only a few inches left, so we're just going to stir it by hand and uh, and, and then kind of go from there. All right, in the microwave we go. We'll do these for, I don't know, uh, we'll try four and a half minutes to start for two one cup Pyrexes. And uh, we'll meet y'all back whenever she's ready. All right, let's try for some sour grape. So we're gonna go purple side for the top side. Okay, beautiful stuff there. All right, so basically purple and watermelon 101. At least this is what I think I did when I finally got this color right. This color has caused me a lot of heartache over the years. Yeah, that's pretty. But, you know, we're just going to kind of wing this recipe tonight. We're not going to take it as seriously as I did whenever I did a dedicated video to it. I think I think I even called the video my nemesis color. Because uh, this color has just been bad to me. One of those colors that I just never used to get right. Yeah, boy, that's pretty. It's fairly simple in theory, <clears throat> but sometimes that is deceiving. Okay, time for some flake. All right, so we're gonna load up the purple side with medium blue flake. Look at that, <sighs> super awesome, all that flake. All right, at least I think this is how I made my sour grape. It'll be, it'll be some, some version of sour grape. Either way, I think it's going to look good in the new mold. This video is about the mold, not about uh, the, the nitty-gritty uh, bowels of, of color building. Okay. All right, so that's probably enough blue. And then the green side gets green flake. But we're going to use two different sizes. We're going to use medium, 0 0.035. Okay. All right, we're gonna use that size. Maybe a smidge more, a little bit more blood. All right. <clears throat> and last but not least, some of the big stuff. 0 0.062, okay? So the green side is gonna have a little bit more texture in terms of flake sizes. I probably would have done the same thing with blue, but um, I only had teeny tiny blue and medium blue. I didn't have any big blue. So note to self, I need to get some big blue. Some big blue flake ought to do us just fine. All right, here we go. We're gonna try it right now and see how she does. Here we go. Wish me luck. Oh, yeah. I think we got a pretty solid hit there on it. Yeah. Excellent. I think the colors, uh, as we can see there, if that's any indication of how it's going to look, I'm really, really liking what I'm seeing. All right, everybody, brand new mold. First time we've ever shot it. We gotta do a drum roll. Here we go. 
In true world's worst fishing style, drum roll please. Yeah guys, I'm losing my drumming chops. Also doesn't help when the stick hits those. Okie doke. Let's see how they look. Let's go ahead and just get it split. Yeah. Wonder what side they're gonna be on. Oh my gosh. Yo. Oh. I didn't press hard enough. The tails didn't fill. No. All right. Operator error. Cut. All right, everybody. That was my mistake. I uh, I I was purposely not trying to push too hard. It's a big mold. I didn't want to accidentally flash. And um, you know, I I hadn't shot this mold yet, so I kind of injected with a little bit more caution in terms of force, and I paid the price. But um, now we're gonna get it right. Here we go. All right, we're gonna hold a few seconds of pressure. The plastic's a little warmer this time. By the time I got around to that first shot, the cups had been sitting for a while, so they were a little low for injection. But normally, um, you know, you can still you can still make it work. So, in any event, no harm, no foul. All right, let's try this again. Drum roll, please. My God, don't ever make baits in an open shop at night in Florida in the summer. There's more moths, June bugs, spiders, little pterodactyl looking things. It's unbelievable. Okay, well, come on, baby. There we go. Here we go. Hopefully they come out all nice and neat again. Oh, of course they didn't. Yes. Okay, that's better. And again, um, sorry about the lighting conditions having to film at night. What we will do is continue some of this footage tomorrow, and we'll look at these with much more natural sunlight coming into our shop so that you can really see this color the way it looks. But, um, yeah. So, um, now that I uh, pushed all the way and got a full fill, Everything filled absolutely beautifully. Um, I don't see any denting. Um, all the tails filled. There's, there's no bubbles um, left in the tips of the tails. Everything's been vented really well. And if we take a look at the vents here, you can see there is some extensive venting. So uh, a lot of machine time, a lot of care goes into a mold like this, which is you know reflected in the price. But you really do get what you pay for to get six perfect baits. Um, hey, you, you, you really can't beat that. Yeah, so we're definitely going to cut it for tonight. It feels good to get out here like in the olden times before kids, you know. Half my videos were all filmed at night. It's good to come out here, push an injector, do some late night bait making. Um, however, uh, it is a work night for me. Um, so I'm going to get to bed here pretty soon. But well, um, like we just mentioned, we're going to pick it up during daylight hours, get you all a little bit better view of everything, what the bait looks like. We'll get a few more, you know, close-ups of it and um, maybe show, you know, a couple of rigging options. And then, like I said, I have some test footage from Josh himself. This thing swims like a dream. It injects like a dream. I'm really excited to see what everyone can do with this mold. We will meet you all back tomorrow or the next day, whenever. All right, now lighting is where we want it. Let's check them out. Yeah. Look at those colors. My gosh. Yeah. And again, you got this uh, mohawk hook keep, as they call it there. Yeah, this thing, uh, this thing displays color really well, y'all. So what we're probably going to do is do another round of these just to use up the rest of the plastic that we had from the other night. And, um, and then I promise the tail mold is coming. All right, so it's tail mold time. So we have our swim bait plastic uh, measured out there. 
And what I'm thinking is, since this is a brand new crawl mold, and it's awesome, it's going to redefine excellence for crawl molds, what better than to try to use the blue crawl color? So what I'm thinking is, we're going to kind of do sort of like dull, molten yellow crawl uh, legs, or pinchers. In this case, tails, technically, because it's the tail mold and see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this yellow and then this MF olive and kind of mix those together. That way we sort of get like a duller off yellow, if that makes sense, right? That's not school bus yellow, it's a little dull. Then we're gonna darken it, which will also gray it with a drop of black. All right, see where that takes us. Yeah, and then just the idea being to have sort of like a more natural yellow instead of a bright school bus yellow. Something like that, maybe even slightly more browned. Just to take, just again, just to natural it up. Right, something like that. And then do the claws in that. So let's go ahead and take this up and let's run the tail mold. All right, we'll see where that gets us. If we don't like that, we'll try it again. But uh, I think that with some blue craw body, oh, you know what? Psst. I meant to add flake to that, my mistake. All right, sorry about the laundry noise, nothing I can do. I have to have clothes to wear. All right, so here's kind of what we have. So here's the fun part, but it's all worth it in the end. I'm gonna go ahead, eh, lay that in there, just like that, beautiful. Beautiful. And again, this tail mold has sort of this little ball bearing design to it. I know that that wasn't really in focus. We're trying to get it there. There it is. Yeah. You get a really, really, really great bond here. Or, or a weld, as, uh, as they call it. You get a good weld between the tail and the body. All right. Yeah, so there's one, one down. Yeah. So a bunch more to go, but that's essentially what we are doing. All right, there it is right there. Got them all in there, lined up, ready for action. So we're gonna go ahead and close. All right, so some more swim bait plastic. We're gonna add, we're gonna do 30 drops of blue crawl, or I don't know, 25, here we go. There's 25. I usually like to add a drop of black just to give it a little bit of base. In this case, we're going to do two drops of black. And then on occasion, I'll add a drop of blue. Um, but I think we're going to leave it as is this go around. Because it looks a little more natural the way it is. However, I do like to bring the blue out to make the blue pop a little more. Uh, uh, excuse me, pop a little bit more. But for the color that I want here, we're going to leave it as is. And then we're going to add our medium square cut black flake to match uh, what we did in the claws there. We just kind of want to add it sparingly because the claws are also very sparse. There's not a ton of flake in this. We just want it to kind of act as a little bit of uh, texture, like salt and pepper on food. All right, here we go. See how she does. Just gonna hold some steady pressure. Felt like a really good shot here. Not too much pressure. We don't wanna try to force plastic into the claws or into the cavities currently um, occupied by the claws because that'll kind of create a mess. But we wanna hold good pressure to get a good shot on the mold. All right, new color, new drum roll. Here we go. Oh, 
Hopefully these turned out decent. It could be really cool in concept, or it could be a complete doo-doo. Either way, we're gonna find out. Oh yeah! I actually like that, okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and kinda lay them out, get them on display a little bit better here. Wow. Yeah. So it definitely works with the sort of, uh, I, I guess, more natural color, right, on the yellow. If that was just straight bright yellow right out of the thing, to me, it wouldn't match the more natural hue and look of the blue craw pigment. So that's why we kind of dulled it down with black and with the brown, is to sort of take the edge off so that it would sort of complement the rest of the hues and the color. That's really, really, really nice. And of course, I mean, blue crawl is, I mean, how do you, how do you not want to use blue crawl for a crawl, for a crawl bait? I mean, holy cow. Talk about a match made in heaven. Those are actually really nice. What do y'all think? That could have turned out bad, but I think, I think we actually pulled it off. Yeah. It's probably what I'm going to do now is use the rest of the blue craw and just run a few um just run a few in solid blue craw just to use up my plastic and uh and then we'll kind of lay everything out and um kind of have our final thoughts on the bait and the mold and then of course y'all get to pick which one was your favorite. Yeah, look at that. Just straight blue craw with two drops of black. That mold wears it well, doesn't it? So being that this is a swimming craw with the kicking legs, this thing is absolute tailor-made for a swim jig or a chatterbait. So check this out. This is, this is a chatterbait that was uh, made by a customer of mine in Canada. And uh, he was nice enough to send me some really, really great chatterbaits. But look how good that color matches with the blue craw and the yellow with sort of the natural browns and yellows in this chatterbait. So, you know, again, um, you know, just looking at a few ways to rig things, you know, this chatterbait may be a little bit big for this bait. Um, however, as you can see, that thing is gonna swim like a dream behind that chatterbait with all that blade wobble and the leg kick. Yeah, they're gonna see that coming a mile away. All right, so now leave me comments down below. Which one was your favorite? Did you like the blue craw with the uh, yellow claws with the tail mold? Did you like the sour grape laminate? Or straight blue craw? All winners. I would have confidence throwing any of those. Here's sort of the rest of them hanging out over there. But let me know down in the comments below which one you like best. All right, guys, that was fun. This mold is an absolute pleasure to inject. It brings a lot of fun back to injection. I do so much hand pouring, especially now I'm making swim baits for a lot of people. I kind of miss out on some of the fun of injection. So this one right here is gonna sit at the top with the ecto crawl as king of the crawls. So you heard it here first. This mold is going to um, set the tone for what an excellent crawl mold is, particularly that style of crawl. It's sort of like a BB Cricket and a Speed Crawl mix. You kind of get the best of both worlds. You kind of get a small slim profile, which if you want to flip this bait is really, is really convenient. And then you also get the amazing action of having two AR legs. So can't really beat that. Anyways, go check it out. Links to the mold are down in the uh, comment section and probably in the description. I'll put them there. So go check it out. Tell the guys at AI that World's Worst Fishing sent you, and we'll catch you in the next one.